Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Excited 
that you sent your one and only Son to be our Savior from sin. Jesus, Lamb of God, we thank you for willingly coming to this earth, for taking on flesh, for living among us as our brother, for living the life that we could not live and dying the death that we deserve. By your victory over sin and Satan, you have freed us to live lives to your glory. This morning, as we celebrate this wonderful Christmas celebration, we ask your blessing upon our worship. May our voices be raised in song and praise to you, that all we do be done to your glory, and the furthering of your kingdom here on earth, we ask this in your name. Jesus offered on our behalf to atone for our sins. Therefore, on the basis of Christ's work and God's own promise, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
we carry through the same theme that we contemplated last evening in our candlelight service. What child is this? This morning we see he's a child who brings peace. We read responsibly Luke chapter 2. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse's wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son. And he wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn.
A child who brings hope. We read responsibly Luke 2, 15 to 20. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go into Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. sales are up. And they are, substantially. 
people taking time to read. Now, I have to admit that I'm not a big reader. I read professionally for my job, but I don't do a lot of outside of the fun reading. I think that's why God invented TV, for people that maybe don't want to read a lot and watch TV. And like that. I'm not saying it's a good thing, I'm just saying it's something. Nowadays, you can read all kinds of different manners. There's still paper, remember that, with a cover on each side and pages in between that you would turn. Many prefer, though, their Kindles, their iPads, or whatever other electronic device it is. But books are a wonderful thing. They can take us to places that we maybe couldn't ever go. We can experience things that otherwise we have never been able to, to experience. The written word can reveal so many things to us. It can reveal a person's inmost being. It can reveal to us their thoughts, their ideas, their dreams and aspirations, their emotions. You name it. It can be revealed. It can be shown, manifest itself to us by that written word as we read it. Some people even keep diaries of what they do so that they can remember things and they can go back and read what it was that they did, the good and the bad that happened in their life. Well, this morning, as we again celebrate the birth of our Lord, we look to the Word. Not just the Word as it finds itself as ink on paper. No, we are talking about the Word as it became flesh and lived among us. We focus our attention on Jesus, the eternal word. And as we do so, a new world, a new world is opened up to us. A world in which we have revealed for us now the mystery of the Godhead. And also opens up for us the love story of God's grace for us. John's Christmas account about the birth of Jesus takes us back, not just back to the hills of Bethlehem, but it takes us instead back to eternity itself. Whereas Matthew records the first Christmas with an emphasis on Joseph and the announcement that the angel Gabriel made to him that the woman that he was engaged to was going to be having a child and it wasn't his. But that was okay because that child was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit inside the Virgin Mary. That's how he describes Christmas to us. Luke's account is very familiar to us. We just heard it again. Luke focuses more on, on Mary in the manger, the angels and, and the shepherds there. But John says nothing about the setting of that first Christmas. Nothing about Mary. Nothing about angels. Nothing about shepherds. John reminds us, though, that Jesus existed even before time began. He is truly the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He has been around since forever. There has never been a time he has not been, and there never will be a time that he will not be. Christ was there at creation, and he will be there at the judgment too. John introduces us to him using a unique name for Christ. He calls him the word ha logos in the Greek. If you look at your little thing on the front of your bulletin, you'll see that word. The word. What a name, huh? The word. What comes to your mind when, when you hear that title, the word? Well, I think it conveys communication, right? Thought, meaning. And it isn't necessarily just restricted to written word, is it? Our thoughts, our words, right? They're just words that aren't put down in writing. If we could read each other's minds, first of all, that would probably be scary. But secondly, we'd know what they're thinking. And that's what God has done for us. He has revealed his son to us 
in a very special way. Jesus is the message. Jesus is the meaning of God to us. Jesus is the one who makes God known to us. In fact, the scripture says no one has ever seen God, but God the only Son, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. He is the Word All-Powerful. That, that name, that title, the Word, also takes us back to a time before time began, doesn't it? At least time as we know it. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, we're told, And God said, Let there be. And it was so. The Word, the Word of the Almighty God brought everything into existence. The world, the universe, matter, everything. The word called forth, and it was so. That's why John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Jesus is the word, the creating force that sustains life. In these words of John, we have revealed for us, again, the mystery and the beauty of the triune God. It's, it's very obvious John didn't come up with this on his own. For us to, again, have faith and verbal inspiration that, that Scripture is not something that origin, originates in the heart of man, we need to go far, no farther than John chapter 1. No human could ever think of penning Words like these. The Word is Jesus, the one born of a virgin. My friends, this Christmas morning, marvel at that mystery and open up the Word of God and ponder and meditate that our God would so love us that He would become one of us to save us from our own undoing. Human reason would try to dismiss this. Human reason would try to tell us that if Jesus existed, he was nothing more than a mere man. Well, if that were so, then Christmas is nothing more than another celebration of another birthday. Nothing more than another Hallmark holiday as far as that goes. But that's not what we see. Jesus is true God, true God, light from light, begotten of the Father. This is the God that reveals to him, himself to us in the manger of Bethlehem. And my friends, Jesus is love in action. Christ brims over with, with grace, that, that undeserved love that God has for us. Christmas is a time to, to open up gifts, to, to celebrate the, the gift of giving. And in G, in, indeed, Jesus is a gift that we need to open. He is a gift that just keeps on giving. So my friends, open up Jesus. Open up Jesus and see a loving Savior who promises to daily guard and keep you till he returns again in glory. Open up Jesus and see and feel that confidence to face every day of your life knowing that he is there. Open up Jesus and see and feel that freedom that freedom that we have from sin, that freedom that we have from guilt, that freedom that we have from the curse of the law. Open up Jesus and see God's love story in action. He sent his one and only son to be our brother. He came to carry our obligation of obedience and to carry out the burden of our blunders and the curse of our crimes. He came to offer himself. Open up Jesus and see that light of life shine forth. John knows full well that many in this world are not going to understand the idea of the Word made flesh. They don't see him as the light of life. We read, in him was life, and that life was the light of men, the light shining in the darkness. But the darkness has not understood it. Human reason cannot comprehend this. Many in the world are so steeped in darkness, despair, that no amount of pretty wrapping paper, no amount of 
bright flashing lights are going to reveal the light to them. They will only find the light in the life of Christ himself, the eternal word. So pray that the Holy Spirit keep us in this humble and awe-filled faith. Only the Spirit can turn us to Christ. Only the Holy Spirit can open our eyes to the mystery of what Christmas is truly all about. It's God's love story of pure grace for sinners, which gives eternal life. Amen. You may remain seated. Now may the peace of God that transcends all understanding keep hearts and minds in faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time in our service, normally we would offer God our thanks by the monetary gifts that we bring to him to continue the work of spreading the gospel, the birth of Jesus throughout the world. Those that are in the sanctuary today are invited to leave their gifts as they exit the church. If you're listening or watching at home and you have the means to be able to support the kingdom, we ask that you send your offerings into the church here at St. Paul's so that others too might truly know the light of life. We continue with the singing of our Te Deum. You are God. We praise you. You are the Lord. We acclaim you. You are the eternal Father. All creation worships you.
when you became man to set us free. You did not spurn the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers.
may shine and be gracious to you, the Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Saturday service tomorrow. Uh, Sunday service will be at nine. Parking lot service as well. May God bless your day in the morning.